Welcome to the show. How are you today? Thank you. Thank you, Elliot, for first of all, inviting me. I'm uh, excited to have this uh, conversation with you. And um, I've been had a busy day morning, a lot of work to do, but uh, happy to be here and uh, share my wisdom with you and uh, your audience. Yeah, I'm very excited to have you here and to get to know a little bit more about yourself and obviously the work that you do as well. So for any of the listeners who have not heard of you before, can you give us a bit of background on who you are and what it is that you do? Uh, I'm personal certified personal trainer, nutrition coach, uh, strength coach. I, I, from my background, I'm ex uh, ice hockey professional. So that was uh, for my, until my thirties, I'm now 40 years old and, uh, and are working basically changing people's uh, uh, life for healthier and uh, for my typical client is kind of like a struggling yo-yo dieter uh, aiming to have a better relationship with food healthier life uh, by simply uh, changing for something what is more sustainable stopping that uh, yo-yo dieting cycle and uh, that's uh, what i have been doing past uh, seven, eight years now, and uh, really, really have been loving it. Amazing. And what was life like as a ice hockey professional? Absolutely. Yeah, it's a true blessing to have something that you really is your passion more so than anything. And on that note, what did the transition from ice hockey to being a health and fitness professional look like? I know that they would share some similarities in terms of your approach to nutrition and perhaps your approach to your training and making sure all of that was dialed in. But it's very different to then take that on to working with people, especially those who have maybe not invested themselves in sport or health and wellness before. So what did the transition look like from professional athlete through to coach? It was not easy actually for me because uh, first, initially when I started, I was as a, from my background, uh, I thought that I I want to improve, uh, like uh, work with the athletes more, and uh, and uh, help them to improve their performance. But then was uh, happened like I had I I was lucky enough to help a couple of amazing people in the beginning of my career who were just uh, normal people, like not uh, nothing like uh, haven't done any sport in their life uh, starting like close to their 60s their fitness journey fat loss journey and then when when i got that i understood that i can actually help those people stopping that yo-yo cycle and uh, changing that uh, mindset from jumping from diet to another diet it gave me actually a lot more like uh, what i find now that it's it's a lot more valuable for people and for me also i because i obviously we are all kind of selfish in uh, some uh, some periods and sometimes so it was it gave me more uh, to help you like because when I think back like that if I'm able to improve somebody's uh, let's say running time with the five seconds or or uh, to become better hockey player or whatever it's obviously it's valuable also but if you are able to change somebody's life who have been struggling for 40 years dieting and uh, first time ever they are able to lose weight keep it off for years for decades that was something like I was like that. Wow, this is something so amazing. And obviously, in the beginning, I I did a lot of mistakes as a coach. But uh, now, after working with so many people, everything like you know, you learn from those experiences. You take your own experiences, and when you work with so many people, help with the, you are in day day to day, you are in contact with so many people. So you start to learn patterns and what are the most common reasons. And obviously it's not uh, for every individual. There is something what is always different. But uh, when you learn from those patterns, you know that, okay, this person maybe fits to that type that maybe this kind of strategy or this kind of strategy could help them. And uh, then ultimately any all clients uh, or all people, they, they have to find something what is for them. It's, uh, it's uh, easier said than uh, done, but uh, when you, when you 
provide as a coach when you provide those uh, different options different strategies then uh, it's uh, for people it's a lot easier to say that okay this is kind of me this could work for me and then it's uh, ultimately it's trial and error you try something and then wow this is working for me i'm seeing a lot of positive changes it's efficient and uh, it's also enjoyable and that's the that's the basically that kind of secret sauce for uh, results which will uh, also last yeah absolutely i think maybe the hardest thing is just to find the right approach that works but not actually taking that step in the first place because realistically i think it is just going through each possible route and just determining what works for that individual and that's what i found throughout my career as well and i find that the more you're intent on putting people in one box the less chance of success you have because if you put everyone in this box but maybe one out of ten people fit in that box however if you open up how many boxes you have and you're like yeah let's try this one let's try this one let's try this one you usually then find something that fits and not only fits for the phase in which they want to improve their health but as you mentioned they can sustain it long term as well right oh exactly and that's the that's the key like that's the ultimate goal i think uh, or i hope uh, obviously there are some coaches who are searching to make some quick buck uh, selling some shit uh, fast uh, progress and uh, then you know ultimately those people they need it uh, in a year again like in uh, now when we are recording this it's uh, december it's uh, it's uh, uh, all know like everybody fitness or every fitness professional knows that january is going to be a busy time and uh, and there are so many kind of uh, commercials uh, ads coming on on fast uh, how to lose weight quickly and uh, do some w- something what is not t- sustainable something some fat diets and uh, and uh, when you think that those those are ultimately even that you get results in the beginning like because uh, who wouldn't lose weight if you are not basically eating anything or cut everything out for first 30 30 days but uh, then if you what i always think that if you if you whatever you are doing like if you can't imagine to do it let's say five years from now it's not going to be sustainable it's not going to be solution what will give you those results what you actually want because losing weight it's not it's not actually that hard but uh, what is the hardest part is to maintain that lost weight yeah absolutely i couldn't agree more with that as well and how has your own training and nutrition changed since doing your professional hockey days to what you do today because i assume a lot more of it is sat down at a computer versus what it was before when you were on the ice rink no that's that's actually that's actually funny thing like uh, uh at the time like um, it was i didn't have so much knowledge about nutrition i didn't know like i had a like uh, at the time there was not so much uh, internet there was no google machine i didn't have any education so i didn't really know like i did so many mistakes like uh, and uh, especially you know i'm i'm just i just recorded my podcast and it was about uh, my relationship with food and uh, i was talking like that how everything affects to my personal life like what have happened like uh, i without even because i i haven't thought it in the past but now because this uh, this uh, episode was it made me think like that where those all those beliefs are coming from and uh, what if you had some like uh, what i had like some uh, beliefs like they are they are coming from my parents like uh, obviously like from my mom like i saw that they uh, i love my mom and everything and i'm sure she did everything what she knew was the was the right thing to do but she just didn't know any better and and she she couldn't know that those things what i learned when i was a small child that they are still affecting me when i'm grown up i'm 40 years old and uh, like things like that you have to finish your plate you have to like uh, you you saw them every year doing like starting some diet doing some fat diet lost some weight and then waiting that uh, how long it how long they are going to last this time and then uh, in ended up always gaining that lost weight back so so it was it was i didn't know so much and uh, and uh, i i didn't pay attention obviously like uh, when you are training uh, most of the days even two times a day or at least once in a day you get so much uh, rid of that uh, kind of like that your nutrition it doesn't matter that much you don't like obviously i was never i never had some visible apps or anything even though i wanted but i i never understood that why it doesn't why it didn't happen and uh, uh, when with this my my work uh, you know 
what I love to use also for my clients, for myself, uh, at least in some point of their life, is uh, to learn from their, educate themselves. Edu I, what I was I was doing, I educated myself with the, my current foods, like kind of track my food, learn from foods what I eat on daily basis. And then when you see it like that, what it actually means, that how much uh, nutritional value they have, how many calories, uh, how much protein, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, you automatically, I, I automatically started to make those changes, make those like a small sustainable swaps to change your breakfast, change your lunch, uh, learn from your portion sizes. And that, that is ultimately what led to that point. Like uh, that now where I am, like I'm, I'm still not the leanest guy. I'm not, uh, uh, but I'm not, I don't have, I'm, I'm very happy where I am. I'm focusing on my workouts. I, I love working out. I love energy, what I have in workouts. And, uh, uh, basically when I was, uh, it's, it's a di little bit different now. Like when I was uh, younger, I did strength training to, uh, improve my performance. And now what I do, I do strength train. I, I had an almost decade break from strength training and of course I, I, I never enjoyed it. And now when I started restarted again, like, uh, it's now, uh, one and a half years ago. I, it was first of all to understand how that muscle memory works. I got my back. I was shocked very first time when I got back to training, how bad I got like, or what was like, when you know how much weights you used when you were squatting. And now, like, I, I remember I had like almost like 200 kilo squats. And when I started after a decade, like with 60 kilos, it was hard. I was sore like a days and almost like a weeks after starting, but it took like a couple months and you, I got close back to my old level. So it's just a sign that you get pretty back fast on your level. If you have, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort to build that strength. But once you have it, even you lose it in, at some point, you are getting it back. And that's where I am now. I'm not, uh, I'm not working out to get like a 500 kilo squat or deadlift. I don't, I don't care. I work for my health my uh, own uh, own like uh, longevity and uh, and uh, to feel good and uh, I do basically I still hate strength training or not always but most days I don't do it because uh, because I really enjoy it but I do it because I know how it makes me feel and uh, and that is like what I, I have changed my approach and with everything like uh, with the training with nutrition like uh, I don't I'm, I'm very good. I'm very happy where I am at the moment. And, uh, and, uh, at this point it doesn't, it, it means that I don't need to track. If I, if I know that I'm not happy with something like my body composition, I can always go back to that skill of tracking and, uh, and, um, and, uh, because that's the ultimate way how you are changing your body composition. If you are not happy where you are. Yeah, I've noticed actually on the strength training that, that your last couple of podcasts have been about strength training for those who are over the age of 30 and 40 years old. Why is that so important, especially as you get later into life and also on the note of yourself as well? What differences have you noticed whilst aging and the difference between your strength training in your 20s versus where you are right now? It has changed a lot. Like uh, what I, what I have, like how I, how I feel now, it's not that, uh, you know, when you do strength training, you have so much energy. It just feels so good to feel strong. Like I don't need to, I don't need to look like a bodybuilder, but when you are able to lift uh, some heavy things, you are not uh, like, I love go hiking. Like it helps also my hiking. Uh, my, I'm still ice hockey referee. It helps my uh, performance there. But it's all that overall feeling you don't have, like when you get older, that um, I used to have like a back pain, uh, neck pain, like kind of that things, what I see from a lot of my friends who are at the same age, that they are starting to around forties, they start to struggle with some kind of pains like back pain, uh, due that you are sitting a lot. So you need to have something, uh, what is, what is kind of trying to prevent that. And, uh, and uh, when, when I do it, like it, it just feels, uh, it's, it's when you think that older you get, like you start to lose, like, I think it's, uh, around age of 35, you start to lose muscle mass if you don't really fight against it. So, so, uh, and it's, it's again, like it's, that's the main reason why, like, uh, there is that kind of thing like called uh, menopause weight gain. So you are moving less, uh, you are, uh, 
you do, you are losing muscle mass which are leading again that you your body even you are eating exactly same weight and before you are starting to gain weight so so you really uh, basically you need to work a lot more than obviously in your 20s but it's still it's still possible and uh, it's still what you should still be doing and how do you get people to go from the mindset like you have of not enjoying strength training whatsoever because i've worked with a lot of clients and they absolutely despise of strength training and we speak about sustainability and they're able to do it for maybe two or three years but after that they're kind of fed up with it so how do you get people to maintain that on a long-term basis if it is so important especially as they get to the later ages of their life first of all it's it's uh, something what you what i what i love that it's it's uh, uh to setting those goals like that you don't you know it's it don't i'm not the guy who says that you have to go to gym five times a week or six times a week obviously if you can but for most people two to four times a week like uh like for myself it's uh, i have minimum it's two times a week and if i if i have more time if i i look my schedule always a little bit ahead then i might go for three times a week but i never do because i do a lot of other things and strength training is basically i keep it as little as possible and uh, when you have a uh, programming like a kind of programs that they are all the time changing like what i love using uh, for example for myself for my m most of my clients obviously that depends every person uh, is a different but uh, when you change your program you focus on different goals like you said uh, what i love like using like maybe three months uh, proper program three three to four months usually you hit like kind of that you do i i love using like one month you go lifting heavier weights with lower reps uh, then next month you go maybe like kind of hypertrophy uh, rep range and next month you work on your strength endurance so you are kind of it's all the time even exercises uh, if you think like proper strength training they are like they are very repetitive if you have like 15 20 rep exercises different exercises you repeat them basically 20 years so it's kind of it could get boring i understand it but it, when you at least you change amount of reps you are doing like sometimes you go heavier obviously older you get I, I never recommend that you should try your uh, one rep max, but let's say you do five, six reps with some like really heavy weight. Uh, that is something like what is what is actually you start to feel like that. That is what is bringing you the most results in a shortest period of time. And ultimately, when you get results, when you start to feel better, that's the where you got your motivation to keep going and keep doing it because you start to feel those uh, health benefits how you are feeling when you are not having any pain anymore so it's i find that's the best motivation what you can what you can do and as a as a coach yeah i would agree and i think finding the right amount of strength training per week for you is important as well i think that two to four range is very nice i personally like to tell people that at two sessions per week you're probably looking at maintenance and a very very small amount of progress in terms of your muscle gain especially the older that you're getting as well, but your strength perform performance is likely to go up if you're doing two times a week. I would say three is maybe optimal for most people, especially if they haven't got a lot of activity going on outside of their strength training. And then obviously four is probably more for the people who are enjoying it and want to get the most benefits when it comes to the muscle gain and the hypertrophy side of things. So I think that, that range is very nice for people to fall into as well. And transitioning onto the nutrition side of things, you mentioned actually that you were stopping calorie counting. It's something you could pick back up again in the future if needed. What are your thoughts on calorie counting? And also what are your thoughts on intuitive eating? Because I guess that's what you're doing at this moment in time. Yeah, no, I, I, love, I love it as a tool, but I don't think it's for everybody. But what I, what I always recommend for all of my clients like uh, that to at least track one week one week including weekends so you see what kind of your normal day-to-day -day week is and then what is how it's uh, helping it's uh, it's uh, that you become first aware because i'm not uh, i'm not going to tell like that uh, if somebody's let's say somebody's signing up with me i'm not going to give them some meal plan that eat this eat this no way because that's uh, it's meal plans for me from my opinion they suck because they don't uh, if somebody's telling you what you should be eating like when i i work with uh, i do live in italy i work with the people from all over the world from us from new zealand from uh, saudi arabia scandinavia so all over the world and uh, when you when you when i if i would tell somebody what they should be eating that, that i don't have these foods i don't i hate those foods but if you learn the principles and then you make adjustments and that's the that's the key 
becoming first self-aware because if somebody else is telling you what you should be eating like obviously if you are some professional athlete who want to maximize their performance that's probably would it's a different story but if you are somebody who is looking like a some kind of diet what you should be able to stick with uh, for next uh, 5 10 20 years the best thing is to learn from your current nutrition make adjustments make sustainable ad adjustments and start what i love instead of restricting adding things adding vegetables adding protein what are helping you if your goal is to lose body fat more you eat those things less you are going to eat probably something else as they are going to keep you full for longer and uh, that is uh, that is but the key is to understand that it's a tool it's not that you should not make it obsessive and uh, to do it like uh, if i can't do it perfectly i don't do it at all but uh, uh, and if you are happy where you are at the moment then obviously that into intuitive eating it's the it's the it's the key and that's what i'm kind of doing now but if i at some point like when behaviors are changing your food uh, what you are enjoying eating you might eat a bit differently and uh, i see that i don't like the way how things are going i don't uh, like the way how i look or i want to change something uh, either gain strength lose fat then it's the it's the time to use that calorie tracking uh, again as a tool in short period of time but uh, if you're like, like was intuitive eating it's kind of like if you are happy where you are it's a skill what you learn and you keep maintain it and uh, that's uh, what I what I have found is the best way to do it. Yeah, I agree and I disagree in some areas. For the meal plans, for example, what I like to do with many people is I find that their nutritional education in the early stages is quite limited. For many, it's almost uh, a zero, to be completely honest. I know I've been there in the past as well. So what I like to do with many people is find out their eating patterns, find out the foods that would be available to them, and then tailor a plan around what their desires are. So if they tell me, I like this type of protein, I like this type of carbs, and I like this type of fats, and also I don't really like eating breakfast, but I like you know an intermittent fasting approach and I can fit in two meals and a snack per day, then my go-to is to create some Something for them because I find that and fitness journey when we first begin can be quite overwhelming so to take out that nutritional component in the initial stages and allow them to make progress and then once they feel ready to implement the learnings on their own that's when I go about that style of bringing in the nutritional education side of things so usually my approach is actually to get them started on a meal plan to take away the thought process and allow them to see some early results and then bring in the nutritional education which i absolutely agree they need long term if they need to sustain it so what's your thoughts on that no i it's it's like i said it's not there's no right or wrong way to do it like it's uh, what uh, works for every individual it's just uh, and that's why i love it that, that there are different coaches who have different approaches like uh, obviously your clients probably are getting results the way what you are doing like it's not uh, it's not that it's not bringing results but for me, what I have found from my clients, what I rather do, I educate my clients so they can make those decisions themselves. Like uh, if your goal, like what I, what I, I'm not going to give some, I have some, obviously I have some like uh, options, like uh, cooking, like meal options, like examples, what it could be. But ultimately what I found for my clients, what have worked the best is that they make decision what they are eating. But, uh, and my job is to keep pr provide them tools. Like, uh, let's say that your goal is to eat 150 grams of protein, how you are going to get there. So 150 grams of protein, there are many ways. It doesn't matter what time you are eating it, but if you divide it, let's say you have a four meals per day, it's, uh, let's say it's 40, 40 grams per meal and one meal is going to be then 30 grams or you have two snacks. So that's your protein goal. Then you start your meal planning from protein. Uh, what what foods you have like my clients usually they love to i love to give them a list of uh, pr proteins like foods what they are actually enjoying or no don't mind eating and uh, when they have that list they write it uh, like they have uh, they know how much they need to eat let's say it's a chicken breast uh, 100 grams provides let's say 26 grams of protein so if you want that lunch chicken is your protein source you have 150 grams you have your uh, 40 grams of uh, protein or if it's a, at dinner if it's a shrimps how much of that maybe it's combination of these two but this is just the strategy is how to get that goal and then you fit what else fits into it so 
that's uh, that's kind of my style of but obviously it's it's it requires a lot more like that it's not some go to plan what you get the plan eat on that everything what is that guy telling you it's kind of what is my approach is that i'm trying to educate uh people with the foods what they actually love eating and uh, and uh, what they are eating on day-to-day -day basis and then making some adjustments like um, where w if you are not getting enough protein let's say for breakfast what many people are struggling what could be what you could be adding and uh, this is uh, something what i how it's how i work with the people and uh, obviously it's uh, it's uh, you have a different approach and uh, there is nothing wrong or nothing there's my way is not right your way is not uh, wrong so there is no no it's just that what works for each individual i really think the key thing here is that most people fear meal plans because they've got the extreme end of it in place they think of the super restrictive meal plan and someone just prescribing something very black and white and nothing to do with that individual and i think that's completely correct in the sense of if you give someone a restrictive meal plan maybe like once again it's come back to putting people in that one box one out of ten people might be able to follow it and get an amazing result but i see nothing wrong if you're then able to give people the foods they genuinely enjoy the foods that they told you they want to consume and show them exactly how that they can fit that in within a structured meal plan that allows them to see results as well because i have so many clients who come to me and in the initial stages they're just getting used to getting out for a walk they're just used to getting to the gym for the first time maybe they've never even cooked before in their life so to then ask them to say well start adding some protein to your dinner they're like i don't even know what protein is you know so actually if you can say well here's you know the list like you said that you have but also give them some guidance of how to put those meals together i think that that can be educational to begin with so they actually see ah it's actually nice to structure my meals in this way and give them a little bit of flexibility within that and it does doesn't mean it goes without education because their education is the fact that they're able to eat two or three meals for the first time in their life and then in due course they can actually start to bring in foods that are quote unquote a little bit more flexible and ultimately end up at that intuitive eating but i feel that with myself it's not about making it sustainable from day one it's about getting them results and being able to put some structure in place and then getting to a place of sustainability on a long-term basis. Because I feel that, yeah, a lot of people in the fitness industry, they fear meal plans. And I'm like, it, I don't think the meal plans are a problem. I think the restrictiveness is the problem. And it's the coach who has the responsibility of whether they make that restrictive or whether they build that around their client. And I think if you can build that around your client, then you can get the best of both worlds. You can have the structure that most people really appreciate because they don't really want to think too much. And then you can kind of drip feed the education side of things. So ultimately they end up in the best place, but they didn't have to do it on day zero where they didn't even understand what, you know, saturated fat or going to the gym even feels like. No, absolutely. And like you said, I, I love that it's, it's what is important that you get results like obviously that is the what keeps you motivated what keeps you going but uh, what i what i like um, what i it's one of uh, what i love to say that results it can be so different like uh, for someone like for most people they think in the beginning that they need to get scale moving but that's not always uh, the best or the only way to measure your progress so there are so many ways of progress like uh, what i i just literally got like today uh, responded for one of my clients who who had a like who was never like she shared some quick win what she had last week and she said the last week and she was she went to supermarket bought a donut and some uh, uh, lemonade drink and uh, she did started eating that donut but didn't finish it and she didn't she took a sip from that lemonade drink and didn't finish it and that was the first time in her life that she didn't finish them. She didn't finish some donut because her brain told her that I don't need it. And for me, I think that that kind of uh, wins, that kind of uh, progress, that kind of results, they are ultimately that the result from that you that you learn and educate yourself with the foods, and then you make you come to that decision that I don't actually need it. I don't. I can be. I can have it but I can have smaller portion. And then when you more often you are able to make, it's not obviously not going to work every single time, but more often you are going to make this kind of decisions what are coming truly deep inside from you, that it's not that somebody else is telling you that you have to eat this, cut this, but you made yourself those decisions. And that is what 
is the result 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 then that you are finding something what is really like you said sustainable but i understand that point uh, point of getting kind of that fast progress it's 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 for me what i found that it's it's on uh, like what i what i t- talk in my social media also all the time is is finding something sustainable and uh, and uh, kind of that health um, healthy approach for everything and uh, and uh, it's not that people who come to me like that obviously they want to get results but they are not expecting that uh, first month you are going to lose this and this mu- amount of weight but that you are starting to make that small better decisions on a daily basis yeah i think that's important i just feel that they're not mutually exclusive i feel that you can try and get the best of both worlds and that's been the balance with my clients because i feel that that initial boost of motivation and seeing the results come in the form that they truly want it of course they want to improve their relationship with food and be able to make a, a smart decision and that's usually a massive massive win for them but also having that and seeing the scale weight down go down for the first time they've ever being able to do that is something that's an immense win as well. So yeah, I think it's something that I wouldn't try and say is just, you know, the one thing that they can do. I think, yeah, if you go in with unrealistic expectations of wanting to lose like the majority of your weight in the first month, then you're going to set yourself up for a little bit of disappointment. But I think that you could definitely see the best of both worlds. And on the note of intuitive eating as well, you mentioned that that's the key. I completely agree. I think that's the gold standard and where I want everyone to end up being on a long-term basis and then as you mentioned come back to the skills of calorie counting if they need to in order to tighten things up or to add a little bit of muscle for example how do you get people to the place of being able to intuitive eat because i truly see that as a skill as well because if many people aren't able to do that and i think many people would like to be able to do that it's ultimately it's a learning like when you when you uh, what i think that if my, my clients they might get uh, they get calorie calls they get protein calls and when you do that you learn that skill of tracking and uh, your foods and then when you do it long enough you already kind of know it's it might be like it's in my head also like that okay where is my protein how much of protein how i'm going to hit my protein goal okay i don't need to know every single calorie but i have pretty good idea like it's not going to be never 100 percent accurate but it's accurate enough to know that and learning from your like a hunger cues when you are starting to feel full, you stop eating, learning kind of that mindful eating habits. And uh, basically every time what I love to ask myself <clears throat> that, uh, do I really need it? Do I really need that food? If I'm, do I, how I'm, go- how it, co- how it's going to make me feel six hours from now, 12 hours from now, uh, how I'm going to feel 20, 30 years from now, from now. And it's not that just that I'm, I, but I never tell to myself that I can't have something. I can always have whatever I want, but I'm always kind of asking myself questions. Do I really need it? Sometimes I do need my chocolate. I do need my uh, candies, but uh, it's not every time. It, it doesn't mean that even I can eat whatever I want, that I, I am eating every time what I want, because, uh, but it's, it's ultimately, it's coming from inside of me that uh, decision, what I'm, what I'm, if I'm going to eat or not, it's just the one decision. And uh, I'm just often I try to think, think it that how it's going to affect for my goals. And uh, it, uh, but it's not like even you have some goals, you want to lose fat. It doesn't mean that your every meal have to be perfectly spot on, like just some chicken and broccoli, like you said that you have. There is so many like uh, uh, you can search internet receipts like. I'm not some food blocker, but if you follow some flu- food blockers, you will find some delicious meal ideas with low calories, which are probably you find something what you can imagine. And, uh, and uh, one way to find it out is, is just building habit of prepping meals, trying maybe one new receipt per week. And uh, that is that when you ultimately, it's not uh, that it's not coming like that you change it just one time. It's, it comes over time. And everything what you have experienced in your life in the past, they are still, they follow you. You are like, even you learn some new skills, those old habits, they come always back at some point. And uh, then it's that, but more often you are able to use some strategies like asking yourself questions. Do I really need it? Do I want it? And if your answer is yes, then go for it. But uh, maybe it's not 
every time. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got nutritional education and kind of some inquisitive question asking around the majority of the foods that you're going to be having. Do you have any other keys to maintaining this intuitive eating long term? No, not not really. Like it's it's a uh, it's a it's a skill what you learn and practice, and uh, it's not the key part is to understand that uh, everybody's there is there will be always a days meals that you fell off track. There may might be a period like if you have uh, if you are parent of small kids, your sleep is suffering. Your nutritional choices from bad sleep are going to be a lot worse. So it's 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 every situation in life. It's uh, it's affecting like so many factors: stress, uh, sleep. They affect your nutritional choices. But when you are able to improve it and think it like consistently, that okay, if I'm not happy with my results could i what can i change what can i do and not just blaming that environment and why things are happening to you because you can you can always you can impact on so many things like obviously at some points there might be periods of life that it doesn't make any sense to put a lot of effort like you have higher priorities than your health like if you are like a new parent or something it's that priority is not in your own health it's in your child's uh, that you are being a great mom or dad so so but it's then in a long term like because there is always something you can do like uh, what i love to tell always that think it like because uh, now life is so hectic you have a uh, lot of meetings uh, you have stress you have a busy work uh, uh, everything but there is always something like uh, instead of thinking like that kind of all in or nothing mindset uh, if you think like that what is what is the simplest thing you can do like some days it could be drinking glass of water before your meals some days it could be going for a five minute walk so it really don't have to be a lot but at least something and then when you keep maintain that habit what you already have created it's so much easier like a uh, workouts if you if you can't you want to do four workouts per week if you can't do it uh, ask how short you have to be that you feel confident like let's say if you're using i love to use scale from one to ten that you can say at least with confidence of eight that this is what i'm able to do like it doesn't matter how less it is it can be four days a week five minute workout it can be going for a five minute walk whatever it is but that you feel confident that when you are able to do it you are staying consistent that consistency is like you know it's so important and then then uh, when you have that habit, you have that consistency, it's so much easier starting adding things and doing a bit more when you are not so much stressed. Maybe your sleep have improved, your kids are bigger than starting all over. I couldn't agree more with that. I made a podcast recently of how to work out with a hectic schedule and I've done it on long-term sustainability as one. Well. I've said the all or nothing mindset is just not going to work for you on a long-term basis. You know, it might serve you well for six, 12, maybe even a little bit longer in terms of weeks. But outside of that, if you want to maintain things on a three, five, 10, 20, 50 year basis, then it's just not going to be an approach that works for you. Because ultimately when you're not all in, you're all out, right? And I think like you mentioned, being okay and becoming comfortable with doing a lower amount of exercise, for example, for a short period of time, because as you mentioned, you might be a new parent or you've got greater responsibilities of work. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. And I think a lot of people get tied to the idea that ah, in my past, I was able to do five sessions a week and I felt amazing, but they can't go from five to two sessions because they feel that that's more of a failure than from going from five to nothing. And I think that that's a real big key. So if you can just get comfortable with recognizing, okay, my life doesn't lean to this right now, it might be six months, it might be a year, or like you said, it might be until my parents grow a little older or I get more comfortable in this new job, but then I transition back to what I might have been doing before and I leave that door open. I think it can be so helpful because I think the key is to not stop. The key is to just keep going with something smaller. So at least you've got those habits in place, even if they're on a less frequent basis. Exactly. I would not agree. And, uh, and it's just that lowering your efforts, but aiming to always do something and uh, then it's so much easier because uh, so many people like you know they are struggling that they kind of think that if i can't do that let's say three times working out then it's not worth of it to do anything or doing like some shorter workouts like five minute ten minute workouts and they are 
there are like several studies which are showing that uh, that even that maintaining your fitness levels it don't require a lot obviously you are not going to get best shape of your life but you are not losing it and that's actually a great progress because uh, most people think that if i can't make any progress i'm not uh, it's not worth of it to do anything but if you are not losing your progress you are able to maintain your level it's always better than nothing yeah i completely agree Toro. i think that there's a lot of temptation to completely go to the opposite end but ultimately then you just got to zoom out and remember the bigger picture and i think most people want to be in great shape and in great health for the rest of their life irrespective of how many training sessions or how close they can follow in their nutrition plan on a week-to-week -week basis so with that being said when it comes to like longer shorter and medium-term goals how do you go about setting those with your clients both for those who are very intent on getting their goals nice and quickly and also those who are ready to just build on a long-term basis how do you go about goal setting for both of those types of individuals uh, let's start with that um, uh, who is like that who want to get quick results so how i approach it is that uh, for someone like if you are someone who need to get that scale moving like uh, and really fast or otherwise you end up quitting it might be like that um, I said some like a calorie call, which is not going to be sustainable, but basically just big deficit for first, let's say two weeks that, uh, but then no matter what, after that initial two weeks, we are going to raise those calories for something what is more sustainable. So the goal with this is that you, you get those quick wins, quick results, which are not going to be sustainable, but you get that, those results to, uh, to keep going, to keep motivated and uh, then you are changing it for something more sustainable and uh, that is something what I don't like to use actually too much but for some people it's the best way to do it because uh, like you said uh, if you need to get something some results but it's it's uh, what I what I when I set that kind of goals that's always like uh, we are going to fix the date how long it's going to be because if it's uh, if it's cause usually what happens that if you get those uh, you get kind of greedy like you get uh, you get some results in a two weeks and you said wow if i keep going like i could keep going and uh, and i get better results or more results or similar results in future but that is always uh, what i have found that it's it's uh, it's not going to be sustainable you might be able to do it for a bit longer but then at some point you are going to starve you are going to have so low energy you end up pinching you end up eating more and it's that's the point when it becomes unsustainable so rather keep it really short and uh, then adjusting it already you make a plan before that when it's when you are going to adjust no matter what it doesn't matter what kind of results you get but it's time what you are going to adjust and then for some someone who is like a, uh for longer term what i love to use is that uh that you basically you start you have to meet the person where they are so it's not that there is no one solution for everybody like i just started with uh, one of clients and for her she was averaging like 3500 steps a day the goal was for first month was only to go to for a walk 10 minute walk every single day to get 4000 5000 steps a day and then we started to add exercises. It can be so little as doing one, two, three exercises and uh, getting familiar with uh, building that habit first of exercising, showing up, keeping promises, what you make for yourself and then starting to add things. So was that, is, that was the one of the mistakes what I did in the beginning of my coaching career. Like uh, obviously when, when somebody is contacting coach asking for help, they are usually pretty motivated. So then when you ask that how many times a week you have possibility to work out and uh, uh, one of my first clients said that uh, five times, six times a week. And I was like, uh, in my mind at that time, I was thinking like that, okay, now with this person, she's motivated. We are going to get some quick results, maybe some nice uh, transformation picture, what I can post in social media and share those wins to get people motivated. But then what actually happened, it was, she was perfectly first week, second week already started to miss workouts. And from week three, I didn't hear anything anymore from her. So it was not sustainable and it was not more, it's not better in the beginning. And now 
when I when I approach this now, like if I talk with the people and they are like how many times a week they want to work out and they are like two to three times, four times, I don't know. So let's start with the two times because it's it's the, the physiological type uh, style. It's it's so, there's so big difference if your goal is to uh, work out three times a week or two times a week and you are able to do two times when you are when you set your goal it's two times you are able to do it you feel so much better of it that you are you actually reach your goal and uh, you were able to do that those two workouts instead if you're, you set your goal for three times you are able to do two times it's same still two times but you feel kind of like that you missed something you didn't you you were not able to do what was the plan and uh, also on opposite you have always possibility to do extra if you still want it so if even your goal is two times of course you can do third workout and that feels that wow you did actually something more and this is something what is especially for first 30 days when people are especially with the people who who are not already working out a lot who are starting uh, after a long break or could be first time ever so first 30 days the only goal is to be consistent keeping that promise what you make for yourself and then after that i say always that what for me my goal is uh, maybe it's because of me like i rather put people work as little as possible just enough to get results to see progress that they keep going and then if they at some point if you feel like that after 30 days after 60 days after 90 days you feel like that now it i could do a bit more then it's time to start adding things but before adding things i rather optimize the program make it sure that you do whatever you promise for yourself and then only then after starting to add more things yeah i like that approach a lot i always go down the route of minimum effective dose it's simple to me that why would you go and do any more than you really need to especially if you're going to still get a decent amount of results and as you've alluded to there's a massive psychological difference between yeah committing to those three sessions and only getting two and feeling disappointed for missing out on the three rather than setting two and feeling like you hit your goal every week it's the same output but very complete and different mindset and the mindset is a huge key of this uh, journey as well so i like that a lot and then when it comes to sustaining people's results long term as well i think ultimately that's what the majority of people are looking for i'm fortunate enough to get a lot of people coming to me and they're not saying i just want to get in shape for this holiday or this wedding they usually have this main goal in mind but they also want to reach sustainability on a long-term basis it's, i want to get here but i also want to maintain this for the future as well what in your eyes is the key to long-term sustainability when it comes to someone achieving their key body composition their best health they've ever been in and the shape of their life well it's it's like i, uh, I said earlier it's it's those habits what you build up it takes um, like a uh, that's why what, what approach I have, it's not probably the fastest way. It's still like that you still have to do the work. You still have to learn to be consistent. But when you learn those skills, you learn, build your meals with the foods, what you actually love, what you enjoy eating. You have, you learned skill, how to, what kind of workouts, how to build your own workouts, like what kind of programming, what kind of exercises, how many reps, how to change it. Like uh, that is something when you, it's, it's all like learning skill, putting them into your action. And then when you feel like that, uh, obviously as a coach, my goal is not to keep some clients for years. It's, it's, if it's a three months, maybe some of them want to work uh, six months, year. But ultimately the goal is that when they leave for that coaching, they are not that I don't feel sorry that, uh, I'm sorry, I lost a client. No, I see it differently that they have learned hopefully that much that they are able to keep going, doing it in a long term themselves. So that is always the key. And, and it's, it's, I think it's, it's a lot of about that way, how you are doing it, how you are teaching it. So it's, it's rather I educate and uh, people that they can make decisions, choices, see how things are working in their life, because obviously we have all different lives. And, uh, and when you find that kind of that uh, golden sweet spot, what is working for you, then it's, it's simply just maintaining it. 
And I want to switch the topics before we wrap up. This has been an interesting conversation and go on to the things that maybe frustrate you about the fitness industry. Obviously, you've mentioned you made a few mistakes back in the day. And obviously, we see people still making mistakes, whether it's unintentional or intentional today. So I'm curious to get your take on what aspects of the health and fitness industry frustrate you at this moment in time. I hate seeing like those kind of all fat diet promotions, uh, spreading uh, false in information like... Um, if you if you if I look, I see a lot of in my TikToks, uh, Instagram reels like uh, fear mongering, like uh, that some one foods are going to they are toxic or or making you unhealthy. Single food, single food groups, uh, uh, spreading some like insulin stuff. Uh, like obviously it might affect in some ways, but uh, that basically just a, as a as a uh, reason obviously every coach uh, is trying they are also selfish they want to sell their services but if you sell something what is actually uh, not like you you just do it in a purpose of selling more to make more money easy back from there that's something what i i hate seeing like uh, it's i don't have any i have also some corporations but i would never take on something even it doesn't matter what kind of money it's not worth of me as a, as my principle to take something i recommend only products that either i use myself i love using or i think the people could really benefit from them in their health and fitness journey and not something like a, like a, what is getting more people feeling anxi anxious than uh, than uh, what they are actually learning but unfortunately those algorithms they are uh, promoting that kind of like news you see you don't see like some happy stories you see only some blood uh, crisis everywhere those are getting clicks it's same with fitness content you create that stop doing this uh, don't eat this or you get something you are like bringing that anxiety and then it it leads that there is so much more misinformation and people don't really know don't know who I should trust. This guy is telling this. The next one is telling exactly opposite. So you never know. People don't know what is their, what they should be doing. And uh, that's what I... Uh, because there is, like we, we talked today, there are so many different approaches. And there is not right or wrong one. But if you decide to do something, pick one coach. Trust for that person, whoever you are going to trust. And do everything what is that coach going to tell you do that those workouts what that coach is signing you don't think that now i saw in instagram reels uh, somebody put this workout routine so i try a little bit of that or or if somebody you see that uh, you have some let's say coach somebody's getting meal plan from you and then you see someone someone is telling that okay you told that to eat uh, kale in that meal plan but then you see next in tiktok reel that kale is poison so you are not going to eat it so trust pick one person Trust for that. Do everything what is that doing and uh, and give it for time. Give it uh, two, three months time and see if that is working for you. If not, then it's time to make change. But don't make those uh, things like uh, change week to week if something is not working or you're not getting results. Yeah, I think that's some really solid advice. Tara, this has been a great conversation. Where can people find you on social media if they want to follow the work that you're doing? Thank you, Elit. It was uh, my pleasure. I, it was a lot of fun to have this conversation. So probably the best place, place uh, is my Instagram or TikTok. They are both uh, at personal trainer underline, uh, or how to say it, uh, Turo. But basically just under my name, Turo Virta, you will find it from all platforms. Uh, personal trainer Turo.com is my website. So there i think instagram is there you can always send me dms if you have any questions want to reach out i'm always happy to have those conversations like tiktok obviously i have a bit bigger audience there uh, but uh, you you don't have that possibility to chat with me directly but obviously if you comment on my posts or anything so i'm always reading those and uh, trying to reply when i can Super, I'll pop those links in the description below. And the final question I got for you today, Tiro, is what impact do you want to have on the fitness industry? No, I, my goal is always like that. I, I want to see like those uh, uh, people making, changing, starting to make that. For me, what impacted most is that when you get some person to, let's say, lose a significant amount of weight, improving their life, 
being able to do first time, like going for a hike, going for a, doing like things what you were not able to do before, or going getting rid of that that kind of dieting mindset, what you have like, especially some women have struggled years, decades, and uh, when you are able to change it, it's never too late. And when you are able to do it, you are able to change your life for better forever. And that is something what is uh, what have impacted me and what is like what is so close to my heart that uh, and my passion what I could keep talking for for <laughs> hours. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being here today, Tara. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Elliot, for your time and uh, inviting me.